he was the leader of the majority party in parliament. And throughout these five years, as many of us, or as all of us Australians faced our own challenges and difficulties with the current administration, he had his own share as the leader of the APC in parliament. He was ruffled on some days, other days he was pepper sprayed. And some days he had to stand in the way and dodge blows aiming at his members of parliament. At some point I called him my Tyson because he was very good at dodging the blows from the SMP and the police. It is my pleasure to call on our running mate and the next Vice President of the Republic of Sri Lanka, Honorable Chairman of Madame Majuba, to show the shahi. Show people the love in why I have people in hand. But I had no choice to reduce myself to writing. Otherwise, we'll have to sleep in this place. As I've known this young man for almost 40 years. That's why I know my young man is very young. I've known him for almost 40 years. I even had a challenge last night. I had to rush to IMAX and meet with Lucy. I asked her, Lucy, what do you have to talk about your papa? And she said, Miss, I can not go. And I think Betty, I'm not venture to call her because she will tell me not to waste her time. So I decided to choose a few areas to touch on. So don't blame me when I will leave many things behind. It's deliberate. But the video has helped us. It's pictorial. So it says a lot. Mr. Leader, our dear first lady, come on. I ask to stand on existing protocols. As the chairman of the party and some others, I've done justice to the protocol. I hope I have your permission to proceed. To our partners, comrades, and distinguished guests, the enormity of my task. This afternoon requires that I preface the introduction of my dear friend and brother, my dear comrade, a fellow Edwardian, don't be jealous, my leader and boss, and by the will of Allah, the president in waiting come in 24. With the court from Rosalind Carter, the former first lady of the United States. I'm sure you wonder why I've chosen a woman. I represent the woman. She said, a leader takes people where they want to go. But a great leader takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but ought to be. I don't take words lightly, ladies and gentlemen, comrades, and our distinguished guests. Words from a great woman, our mothers, and especially those from a former first lady like Rosalind Carter, speaks to my conviction that our dear party, the APC, has chosen a great leader who is ready to take this nation of ours where its people will not necessarily want to go, but where they ought to be. And why not? He is a technocrat with unmatched credentials and a compassionate politician of unblemished integrity. When he first made his goal at the presidency of our dear nation in 2018, the doubters and naysayers retorted, to Sabiam, five years on, his name is not only a household word or a buzzword for change, 
It is now symbolic of that desire of urgent change at the State House from the well meaning people of our nation who have seen what the past five years of how the SLPP misdirection has led us to a beach. Our soon to be president and dear leader served in the most critical department of our nation's economic development and international relations for almost four decades. At the Bank of Sierra Leone, where he started, he rose to become the governor. He was financial secretary at the Ministry of Finance and Economic Development, where he once again became the head. So don't doubt it, the 24th of June will become the next president of Sierra Leone. Just before the 2018, before 2018, he was our chief diplomat and minister of foreign affairs and international cooperation, where he polished and sold the image of Sierra to the rest of the world at the front and center of our international relations agenda. The high-profile service of the front runner in the June 24 elections did not stop in Sierra Leone. He also acquitted himself well as an international servant with the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, normally we call the IMF, and the Commonwealth. Throughout his exemplary work, his reputation was never called into question. Our leader is a patriot who put his nation over and above his personal gain. He left the World Bank in the 90s to support the economic recovery process in a country trapped in a violent civil war. He left a well-paid job for a national call that demanded immense courage and sacrifice because he believed in them, as he does now, that Sierra Leone does not deserve the catastrophe it went through, nor the disaster it is now faced with. Therefore, while during that period, he was central in the economy, reducing our national debt and preparing the country for the post-war transition process. This time, he wants to lead the charge of rebuilding our economy, reuniting our people, and deepening democratic governance. A workaholic, as they normally call him, who combines experience and expertise my boss, our party's flag bearer, no doubt has a great understanding of our economic and governance leadership and a great appreciation of what it takes to put our country back on the path of progress. Born in the north, I think the place is called Kamaru, I'm not too sure, but somewhere in the north. Schooled in the south and the west, St. Edward, as I mentioned earlier, the Mipa. I go find we resonate to what I'm saying. <laughs> and married from the south to Auntie Betty, or Betty Kay, as we normally call her. Our leader and presidential candidate has a penchant for competence and national inclusion. Yes, sir. Throughout his time at the Bank of Sierra Leone and the Ministry of Finance, he recruited the most competent Sierra Leoneans to work with him, regardless of their ethnic background. For him, it is about putting the nation first, which the current government has failed to do. He has mentored the best of Sierra Leoneans for service to the country and run the economy, a legacy, a legacy that has been torn and thrown away. But very soon, that legacy will be re-established. Excellencies, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, fellow comrades, it is refreshing for our nation that a consummate technocrat of such towering public service pedigree will put himself forward to lead our nation at a time when our people are groaning under the punishing weight of incompetence, corruption, ethno regionalism and downright unsympathetic leadership. At this juncture, kindly allow me to present to you the gentleman with whom we in the APC are well 
please. We the MPC are well pleased with this gentleman. The KIA leader Sierra Leone needs at this challenging time. The president in waiting. As I thank you for patiently listening. Please let's give a round of applause for Dr. Samuel. For now, this is serious business. All of us, all of us here are to be transformed into agents of development, agents of the message. Okay, and I for listen and get the message go to the end of the world of this country. So we consider ourselves privileged and humbled to be invited to this event. We can be a big, a big, and not just that they talk self, now allow me to talk. And the other one will hold me responsible. But for now, if I drop pin, I drop this pocket, I like the drop and so, I want to know it's like a drop of a lie. Thank you very much. Let me acknowledge and appreciate existing protocol. Notwithstanding that, let me say thank you to our former president and chairman, a leader of our party, who is not physically present, but I do know he's spiritually here. Jesus bless, thank God. Praise that Almighty will continue to keep such a blessing. You're not easy to run party like a EPC. For 10 years or more years. Find it up for 15 years. Not for me, I know. Can look at the people like a Usho. Possible management. Hey, drum now. And I'm probably the bound to me. But thank God he don't shape the job. So we will try. So, Sandra Gaba, thank you very much for coming. She is my adopted grandmother wow, from another wow, 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 wow. That's you know the good crew, you know the people who are following. And they decorate me all. Let me also recognize the representative of His Excellency Dr. Ernest Mike Koroma, Madam Mami Sia Koroma, for coming. I will not say that I all to the deny. I welcome you, sir. And our people here. Of course, I stand here, somebody may say, I was mentored and energized a young lady from Masangbaka and Blama Masakoe in the Bujao district. We met in the sporting area. At that time, she held the national record for junior sprinting, 100 meters. But I don't know because at least I don't point on my background. You never run again. Betty Masa Kumara D. Rogers. Of course, my running mate and soon to be Vice President of the Republic. Tell me about and his lovely wife and soon to be the woman in charge of the first Vice President. The Vice President of Sierra Leone, Madam, you're welcome. Thank you so much for taking care of him. Otherwise, you will not have been here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, come on. Dr. Black Monte, thank you for coming. Give me a 
because of which recognize the elders of this party. Of course, my mentor, secondary school and university, Chief Suwan Ukape, took care of me as a young girl throughout my school as a head of secondary school and credit card. And up until today, they have not left me behind. Thank you very much. We have, I hear, the Carter Foundation, we have the Diplomatic and Consular Co and Development Partners, and then we have some members of our electoral management body, the PRC. Thank you for coming. We have great faith in you. <laughs> I was hoping that uh, ECSL would be here. Are they here? No. I have not been there for me. This is a loop well that is responsible. Oh, yes. Because every five years, Mr. Leonan is given the opportunity to exercise his or her voting rights. So choose the leader that he or she wants going forward. Now that they stand on the way, and this is the same. Because we don't do bad more, who do bad next? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all, before I start the statement proper, kindly permit me to request you to kindly be upstanding. And let's just recognize the one minute silence for those APCs whom God has taken away from us, and equally for those who departed from us through bad politics, bad intervention, the death of Tungu, the death at Padema Road Prison. Makeni, Tom Bolivar, too many places, even 91. We should be grateful those of us who come from villages and towns that have not been affected. May their souls and the souls of the faith be back. And we like to pressure. Shine upon you. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm immensely honored to heartily welcome each one of you here today and to present the one in nation. Manifest of the All People's Congress Party for the year 2023 presidential and general elections. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, comrades all, many great leaders before and during our time did anchor their aspirations for their people on simple words, notably. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream. President Obama did say, Yes, we can. Our famous President Trump stated, Make America great again. I think these are all appropriate for the Israeli world. We have a dream to make the Israeli world. Yes, we can make the Israeli world. Of course, we can make Israel great again. I salute you, our sister. Amida Guru from Kenya, Angela. I can see you standing there. 
We have a secret that I will not divulge here. I've grown up to the 2018 presidential debate. God bless you. Oh, okay, I thought you were you standing there. I'm right here. Oh, you're hiding there. Let people see you. She's here helping us again. The media. Look at as well as international. In 2018, I lost the presidential race to the now President Julius Madam Yo, who has just concluded his five years of constitutional tenure on the mantra, New Direction, which by the time he ended his term was changed to New Misdirection. Today, please allow me to lend my presentation of our One Nation APC Manifesto 2023, and indeed, my aspirations, our aspirations for Sierra Leone, with my four simple words on which it is anchored. And these are my Sierra Leone, my these are my simple words. I know wherever our forefathers are today, you want to hear that. Often, political words and speeches might not matter to some people. But on this particular occasion, I want to believe that most of our people during these very trying times do need more than ever before words of inspiration and promises of hope for a better life and a better future. And it is for this reason that I am running again for president of the Republic of Sierra Leone because we all want to believe in change again. I'm saying this from an informed insider position because I have lived in Sierra Leone. I have worked in Sierra Leone for almost all my life to date. This is my Sierra Leone, my responsibility. Our youths are saying to me, Samura Kamara, because some day just say Samura, because they are born to me. It's not beginning, even below age five. They are saying to me, we want walk, no more push. We want walk, no more push. The women are demanding. We want positive, proactive inclusion and empowerment in government. We salute them. In their disappointment, in their frustrations, and in anger, the people of Sierra Leone are crying to me, Samura, angry, Basma. Samura, we want it. Samura, we want freedom. Samura, we want peace. Samura, we want justice. Samura, fix the economy for we do have to Fix the exchange rate for we. Fix with the old currency, we don't go kaput. And make it valuable again. Fix the prices of our basic food items. Fix the high cost of fuel, fix the high electricity charges and transportation costs. Samura, do ya? Fix our chronic corruption, our national divide, and our endemic poverty. Do ya? We beg you, Samura Kamara. Fix our hospitals, fix our schools, our markets, our electricity. 
our water, our roads, our informal settlements, otherwise known as slum. Do you have Papa Samura Matthew Wilson Omara? Give us back our mutual respect and dignity as peaceful ceremonials as we were before. Accordingly, all and sundry are calling me Samura our solution. I just had somebody saying Samura our Moses. Samura, as Dr. Black once said, Samura our hope. All the blasts from the big God may forgive me. But this is coming from the heart of Sarah Luni. We are looking for a better life. May God mighty help me. Indeed, managing such expectations becomes my biggest challenge and nightmare as the next president of the Republic. The good thing is, all is well. It can be done. But in partnership, all of them. I cannot do it. Distinguished guests, comrades, all. Unlike others in the past, our 2023 One Nation Manifesto has been designed as a commitment of the All People's Congress Party to the people of Sierra Leone. This manifesto is especially informed by the experience and successes we achieved during the 10 years our party was in governance, 2007 to 2017. And a period guided by the broad history of the APC party as a broad-based national grassroots movement. In our 2023 manifesto, we have highlighted the current checkered nature of the social, economic, and political dynamics in our country and the attendant severe challenges that will be left behind by the new direction of the new misdirection government. We are very clear as to the complexities and challenges that we face at the threshold of the 2023 elections. And that is the big difference between us and them. They came in as novice. We are coming in as experts. Additionally, we have underscored our past achievements, the legacy of the APC in power, as well as the experience gained in bringing unprecedented developments to our country. And furthermore, we have laid out also in detail our commitment to the people of Sierra Leone for the ensuing five years with the APC in power. Our intention here is very clear. The APC wants to give our country and our people, and more importantly, our esteemed grassroots nationwide, a basis for comparison between what we achieved when we were in governance with what the new direction, misdirection government is leaving behind as they exit in 2023. Importantly, we want the reunions and the international community to understand what the commitments to the people of Sierra Leone are and how we intend to restore the glory and dignity of this beautiful nation. Our program of commitments is equally up for comparison with the usual unrealistic and shallow promises for an extended five years of our new direction neighbors. In so doing, we are asking the voters to compare, contrast, decide, and vote for the party that is capable of redeeming, reuniting, healing, and rebuilding our country, and putting an end to the ongoing unprecedented 
dehumanizing and unacceptable suffering of our people. We are asking our people to vote for a completely different type of political leadership. A leadership that is honest, that is realistic, that is humble, that is respectful, caring, consulting, and a leadership that is listening. A leadership that is tolerant to the cries of its people. We are confident that our people will continue to have a living memory of the APC's past achievements in governance, which we have laid out clearly in this One Nation Manifesto. Given those laudable antecedents, the APC is again seeking from the people of Sierra Leone a renewed mandate on 24 June 2023 to continue serving them from where the party left off in 2017 and from where it is taken off in 2023. A time to consolidate and a time to continue building for a better nation in the years ahead. Our goal is to further expand and spread the opportunities for peace, inclusion, cohesion, stability, growth, and prosperity to be enjoyed by all Sierra Leoneans in all parts of the country with specific focus on the disadvantaged segments of our society. Sure, Anthony. Anthony, can we not describe but I see one ministry of for the disability. <laughs> so we can press them for one more. <laughs> we are able to do it during our 10 years in government, during which the APC government worked tirelessly and succeeded in bringing about and maintaining peace and stability, provided a better sense of direction properly formulated and implemented impactful development priorities, good hard and soft priorities, and executed the mandate of governing the country based on inclusivity, accountability, honesty, and commitment. During that glorious period of the APC, the government, we promoted democracy, as my colleagues have listed. We promoted tolerance and good governance. We respected the freedoms and rights of Sierra Leoneans. We empowered the women and the youth and the people with disabilities. We did not hesitate to allocate the resources necessary to ensure that our people had access to basic am amenities, such as electricity and water supply. We constructed new roads, rehabilitated and strengthened our economic and social institutions, and revived mining activities throughout the country, bringing in the largest private foreign investment ever in the history of Serenity. We revived the railway for the transportation of minerals. We made dramatic progress towards food security and removed the stigma on our country of having the highest infant and maternal mortality, death rates at the time. We expanded access to an infrastructure for affordable education. We significantly empowered and enhanced the participation of women, the youth, and our brothers and sisters in the diaspora in governance. We raised and tolerated voice and legitimacy in our city. The 2023 One Nation Manifesto of the APC does not make promises per se. On the contrary, what it offers are commitments as indicated earlier. Commitments that will be fulfilled as much as possible based on our immediate to short term and medium to long term vision and goal to heal to reunite, rebuild our Sierra Leone. Commitment to foster national peace, unity, inclusion, cohesion, and prosperity for all together. 
As a democratic political party, we believe that it is only through a dedicated and purposeful continuation of these transformative programs that we shall succeed in ending the poverty and ongoing suffering of our people. Our One Nation Manifesto also represents the aspirations of the grassroots. The aspirations of the poor and less privileged of our society. It provides an alternative vision and solution for truly transforming the lives of people. Hence, it is a practical and implementable program. I repeat, it is a practical and implementable program. It's not talking about being, being the bridges across the river that you don't understand how deep it is. <laughs> this will shape and define the APC party government, guided by the need for pragmatism and our past 10 years' experience in governance. We will continue to improve on the programs that have in the past produced successful results in expanding service delivery, creating jobs, and spreading government. The APC party is proud to acknowledge that we built a strong foundation for democratic governance and socio-economic development of our country during the 10 years we had in government. At the same time, we are mindful of the prevailing challenges facing us. Now is not the time for complacency. It is certainly not the time for blame games. It is not the time to hide behind figure-thirsty security personnel. It is not the time to intimidate our people and instill fear in them as they step out to exercise their democratic choice of political leadership in the next five years. Let us call as political parties, restore and give our people, once again, democratic space is so desired. It is time to redeem, to unite, and rebuild surrender. Maestro, you know, Our manifesto is anchored, it's all my way, on ten pillars. I'm sure after having delivered this, the PPRC will just uh, acknowledge the ABC party as victory. <laughs> Our manifesto is anchored on 10 pillars. Pillar 1, we foster national unity and cohesion, building one nation. We shall take immediate steps to restore national cohesion, peace, and unity, including steps to eliminate ongoing political and ethnic tensions, orchestrated largely by weak and heavy-handed political leadership. We shall foster, secure, and protect the equitable distribution of opportunities across the country and undertake constitutional and institutional changes to entrench decentralization and local government. The unexpected fall of our historic Leon, the unexpected fall also of our historic icon, the continent train, is a reminder of the need to protect and preserve our historical heritage and culture. The need to strengthen our security apparatus, sports, media, entertainment, fashion design, and film industries as tools and agents for building national peace and social cohesion. Pillar two. We'll address economic deficiencies and vulnerability, more importantly, and sooner rather than later, address the cost of living crisis at the structural level. It is unprecedented for the IMF, as well as other development partners, to engage political opposition parties openly to discuss macroeconomic issues of our country on the run-up to a general election. 
by courtesy, by courtesy of their invitation. That is the IMF. I and my colleagues, with the chairman of the party, share our views on how we can quickly stabilize the macroeconomic situation of the country and put it on new growth trajectory. We have also urged them to make this engagement a norm, a common practice in their future missions, especially in the least developed countries. Together, there is an understanding the IMF on the broad objectives of the ongoing fund-supported program for Sierra Leone, leading to successful programs. This program we're running on now, I hear, at the state held dates of conclusion in June. A new program should be articulated in November. So now we're well placed, at least, for the conclusion of this program, Coming of a new program, we are engaged, and you know our view. We indicated to the IMF our manifesto commitment to institute a quick economic and price recovery plan that aims to address the current macroeconomic and price challenges, as well as a medium to long-term development plan that aims to create a more sustainable development trajectory, drawing on the past six, two years in the bed. We are cool not to understand why I said I go back to 1961. I know where did this one I go understand? Don't tell Pamose Rula. Thus, we shall restore macroeconomic stability and work towards transforming Israel from a consumption to a competitive production economy. This will include prioritizing sector-wide approaches, private sector development, strengthening indigenous businesses and rural communities, leveraging the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement and other trade agreements, and the potential of digital transformation. We shall dedicate our energies to conclude and enjoy the benefits of the MCC Group. Yes, we're going to enjoy it. So, thank you for the job. We also have no work for the job. We acknowledge the huge amount of resources poured into this country by our development partners and will therefore commit to uphold all donor supported projects as national projects. We shall reignite our middle income status ambition. This is the, one of the biggest legacies we had as Bakuman left for me. But transforms Israel into a middle income country by the year 2035. Of course, at the time, we will do so well. That's when Man Ki Moon visited Sierra Leone to close the UNAPSI program in Sierra Leone and transform to the development instrument. They said, the rate at which Sierra Leone not develop under this Bakuman. It will achieve this middle income status five years earlier. I think that's a big challenge we have to achieve. Instead of 2035, let's lay the bit in blocks to be able to achieve it in 2030. Or even before. It's not impossible. What else have done? We also can do. Not also. Singapore has done it. Thailand has done it. Eh? South Korea has done it. In Malaysia today, our, our palm tree is a livelihood. For this to happen, for us to achieve a middle income status, we shall intensively and extensively explore and exploit to the fullest potential every conceivable sector of social economic activity. Even the Okada rider is part of the economy. The great economic output would encourage them. I'm talk about the granite seller. We did sell granite. Now we went to the street office. Today, that lady, when I first met her younger, they sell granite. Small, small picking. 
Three years later, today, in the university, go like your hands there. Because any girl to a cargo, we they buy all. <laughs> one top of one, one top of one, buy with you. The way my daughter can't now, you see, you say, well, I will pay you. Oh. And that inspired me. That inspired me. We've been up to give college fee. We have made a promise that come here. Say, the APC government, under Samurai, are devoted to Samara. No child, no you, and I mean no you. We stay out of tertiary education because of school fees. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, fixing the economy is undoubtedly the most single challenge of our time. My friend, third pillar. Our third pillar is to intensify efforts in job creation and establishment of pathways for every adult, as well as the youth and the women, to earn a living wage. It's not the toil, you get threshold wage, not so. Start a wage again, you get. You get threshold income. Well, I have a threshold income, not so big. We come and can ask, now it has uh, been raised from 600 to 800,000. We have a minimum wage again. Now you can see there are three indicators where they compete. Minimum wage, potential income, and a living wage. It is only a living wage that challenges the cost of living. And this will be our top priority. cross-sectoral interventions, which shall collaborate with local and international partners to create jobs while simultaneously reforming and capacitating the civil and public service to prioritize service delivery. We want to make the public service, the civil service, competent and efficient again. Yes, if you join politics, if you want to be political person, see us in the open, come on and the people's side, come on and the civil side, come on and the public side. Go and change your politics. Because once you're there, you're not serving your political gurus. You're not serving the party. You're serving the entire people of this country. Yes. Our fourth pillar, accelerate investments in our people with a specific focus on the education, capabilities, and health care of our children, women, and the youth. We are old people there. Mami Daba will not left my beer no. I'm working program now, and I just want to be for now. And I don't see how I say we join up for that program. We shall enhance the efficiency and equity of all social spending elevating quality and explicitly caring for the most vulnerable segments of our population, including the socio-economic and political empowerment of the old age, the women, the youth, and the people with disabilities. We shall set adequate funding mechanisms to support women and youth skills development and viable business enterprises. In particular, ongoing human capital development, free education, free healthcare, teacher support, and medical staff support initiatives will be upheld, strengthened, and made better and sustainable. Fellow Israelis, come resolve in the APC. Let us begin to think big and act. Our fourth pillar, fifth pillar, accelerate investments in physical and digital infrastructure development. We shall pursue responsible investments in energy, transportation, water supply, urban planning, affordable housing, information communication technology, while fostering regulatory frameworks for mutual and 
and mutually beneficial partnerships with the private sector, international financial institutions, with our development agencies, and regional economic bodies. We will vigorously pursue e-government transformation, serious attention and significant resources will be devoted to restoring regular city, especially in the capital city and headquarter towns and cities. We will restore the impetus for road construction, focusing on international and intercity connectivity, while upgrading rural and intra-town road construction. The bottom line is, as Anis Bayakuruma did, will make the entire Australia a work Our sixth pillar will deepen and strengthen decentralization and rural development. We shall revive our decentralization program, supporting the administrative and financial empowerment of all local councils on the foundation of accountability, respect, and fairness, and delivery. Urgent measures shall be taken to restore the confidence of our development partners in this critical pillar of our progress. They are waiting on the sideline to help us again. Pillar seven. We enhance good governance and the rule of law. We shall uphold democratic principles, protect human rights, intensify and depoliticize the fight against corruption, and build robust public institutions, transparent and accountable to the people of this country. Today, almost all our public institutions are under state capture. Let's redeem them from state capture and take them back to the people. We shall give power to the people by creating platforms to make inputs into decision making and hold government accountable. Power to the people! Now the answer. This is a revolutionary statement in, 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 in a, a community in England. This is the Smith. Power to the people! Power to the people! My Sierra Leone. We will put that on. <laughs> pillar 8. In our Pillar 8, we commit to protect our environment and respond to climate change. We shall roll out improved natural resource management strategies, climate focus mitigation and adaptation measures, including the creation of green jobs and green economic factors. Pillar 9, we will strengthen and broaden economic diplomacy. We shall foster strategic partnerships with our jurisdictions, align priorities, ensure value for money in ongoing and future investments, and pursue mutually beneficial partnerships with deep respect for their taxpayers while safeguarding our sovereignty. They are also financial taxpayers, their taxpayers' money. We have to respect them. Overall, contrary to what happened when I was the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we shall spread our economic diplomacy across all ministries, departments, and agencies of government, and not only in the foreign service, and strengthen international development cooperation. Every minister now must have an economic diplomatic agenda. That's how you raise money, develop yourself. The last pillar, pillar 10, we foster partnership with the diaspora, our diaspora, for national development. We 
Asian map our diaspora network. Collectively identify areas of expertise and interest and create a welcoming environment for mutually beneficial engagements and investment. We shall also work towards transforming our diaspora into international advocacy agents for Sierra <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, unresolved. Once in governance, we commit to mobilize the whole society as a resource necessary to transform Sierra Leone for the betterment of all. In this regard, my team of experts is now working assiduously on the plan and budget estimates for operationalizing and implementing this one nation manifesto. Yes. You know, only they think we would ask you almost the manifest of course you say no sir. Hundred dollars. <laughs> it has to be monetized and we shall do it. And here I want to express my profound gratitude to the APC Secretariat and staff and my team for their diligence in producing this manifest. The process is not over yet. And I want to urge them to continue working together until the final victory. In conclusion, I don't know what I will talk here. In conclusion, we are conscious of the challenge facing our country today. The question is whether in the coming elections, our people will be given the space and freedom to vote in a president and government of their choice. That will work assiduously in uniting our country. Or, alternatively, to have their vote suppressed by this new direction leadership. Thus risking, exposing, and subjecting them to more of existing suffering and to losing the gains of a hard-won struggle for progress, peace, and prosperity for all trade unions. The people have a choice. Either you a positive change, or you want to continue the hardship, the suffering, the molestation, the dehumanization, the jail, the arresting, Police brutality. How many of us want to vote that way? Nobody in this country. We need to remind our people. That's why, as I said earlier, this group seated here today, you are the critical mass. Let's go out and tell our people the message. As I can tell you, say just now, that might be say. Be on the left field and let people have their hand again. It's a very serious, very serious request. It happened to me in Rukupur a couple of days ago. I went there. We arrived at this place at about 10 o'clock at night. Journal I. And I addressed the people. The time we finished was about 11, we to 11 I was jumping into my car. Went to and said, hey, 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 please, sir, please, sir, wait, 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 wait. I said, what do you have it? Wait. I said, what do you have it? One mommy said, if you don't see you, if you don't touch you, I'll be back. Very, very good. So I jumped out of the car and I walked. Also, they hold them. They hold them. Luckily, the pocket size. They don't be too big. Yeah, they don't be too big. So they hold them. Collect the crown. I start to grip me. 
Aaron Miller. I'm sure it was not for Samura Kamara. It was the hope and confidence and trust that I'm going to say, Papa can save me. Yeah. No more yeah. That's my reading of her. And she's not alone in this. She's not alone. Some want to be the same, but they're scared. But today they're not arrest with boys. Yes, you cannot say, Poor Murbara, along in Top Bridge, to be the past. I said, Oh, on the track and this country, Brahmaja arrest her. Because you see that talk. The poor man, handicapped, was sent to CID. How can the set of people be so inhuman? Oh dear. Baba God, help me. The APC is confident that the people of Sri will once again reaffirm their trust and confidence in the APC party by giving us a resounding victory at the polls in the forthcoming presidential and general elections on 24th of June 2023. And allowing us the opportunity to start again to rebuild their punctured lives and livelihoods. June 24, 2023 marks a pivotal change in the history of Australia, second only to our Independence Day, April 27. Change we want to make, change we will make. On June 24, 2023, we'll be equal to the change we made in 1961, April 27. It seems that we got a monumental, a new era for this country. It's not an ordinary date. This date will be remembered by our people. If we vote right, we will be remembered. If we vote wrong, we will be remembered. Let's vote right. Let's think right. Finally, finally. As in Pentecost Sunday, yesterday, for Christians, let us on election day, June 24, pray and ask for a spirit of renewal, of hope, of peace and of unity for the entire Australian community. Pentecost, a day of remembrance, and we ask the Lord give you the spirit for change. Fifty days after Easter, the Christ rise. It's not an ordinary day. So let us pray that we may overcome any more fear, any more intimidation, and any more doubt or differences that will dampen our resolve to act aright. But be united in giving our beloved country, Sierra Leone, a new facelift, free from false promises once again. Despite the difficult times Sierra Leone has gone through from independence to date, the medium to long-term prospects of this country are still promising. But with the right leadership, policies, and capacity to deliver. All men are equal, some are more equal. Want a positive change? We have to choose the right leadership, the right policies. My Sierra Leone, my responsibility. This is a responsibility for each and every one of us. It is a belief that we are connected as one people of one nation. It is a call to restore a true sense of responsibility and pride, both in terms of accountability as a government and in terms of our responsibility for all ordinary citizens that they must get involved in nation building. When I say my Australian my responsibility, it's not only mere words. Just as Matthew Jackson said, I have a dream. Obama, yes, we can. 
America once again. These are all appropriate for Sierra Leone. And these are all definitions of what my Sierra Leone by responsibility made. Let's make it happen. May this manifesto May this manifesto, we have an abridged version and we have a detailed version. May this manifesto inspire our citizens of Sierra Leone at home and abroad. May it help us inspire us to change our mindsets toward nationhood. Therefore, to make us on June 24, 2023, to vote for unity, to vote for peace, to vote for stability, to vote for inclusivity, and to vote for prosperity. Let us vote to end our suffering and hardship. Vote for the APC party. Same. Almighty God and Father, Almighty God and Father, we, members of the All People's Congress Party in Israel, do commit our One Nation Manifesto into your merciful hands, protection, and direction. And to the people of this country to accept that this is a genuine document. Let us follow you. Amen.